Hey, what's up guys? It's Apollo here. I hope you guys are doing well and welcome back to Medieval Kingdoms Total War 1212 AD. Today we have a very awesome battle. This is a historical battle. It's called the Battle of Plaus. And I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. I'm not 100% sure how to. I don't think I'm too far off, though. Anyways, it, it took place on the 27th of September, 1331. It was part of the Polish Teutonic War, which started on the year 1326 and ended on the year 1332. So by the time of this battle, the war was almost over. So Poland had an army of about 5,000 men, and the Teutonic Order had an army of about 7,000 men. Now, the Teutonic army, they were blockading a peasant town called Plaus, because we are near Plaus, Poland. One third of the army decides to leave the blockade, and that is where they meet the Polish army. Now, Poland, they have two forces. The first force who attacks head on, and there's a detachment force who's left of the town who attack through the force and do a little bit of a surprise attack. Now, in this first phase of the battle, it's a pretty decisive Polish victory. We even have the Prince of Poland. His name is Casimir III of Poland. He is actually ordered to leave the battle because you don't want your, your prince to die in a fight that you were most likely going to win. That would be pretty tragic. I mean, he's the future of the kingdom. Anyways, uh, at the town of Plaus, there is uh, more Teutonic sol soldiers, obviously. Another force, they hear the chaos of battle and they want to support their fellow knights. So eventually they march forward and support the first wave of troops who are getting attacked. Now what we have here is a wave battle, which is pretty cool. Because not only do we have the immersion of a historical setting, but we also have a very... Uh, not arcadey, but almost gamey, you know, if that's a word, where it's just a really cool scenario that's historical and really awesome to watch as a gamer, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Now, historically speaking, this was a Polish tactical victory. Some people say it was inconclusive because Poland did not destroy the Teutonic Order. The, the army was not destroyed. A lot of them fell back. A lot of them retreated and they got out of there. But you can't blame Poland because... This battle was an all-day battle because it was a wave battle, you know, it was just endless. It just They just kept coming after the Polish army, uh, but Poland, they suffered a decent amount of casualties. I think they lost about 1,700 of their 5,000. They're probably tired, and they just did not want to pursue because, you know, just take it for what it is. Just enjoy the victory. Now, on the Teutonic side, they lost about 2,600 men. So it's a very crucial victory, I think, in my eyes, a very crucial tactical victory for the Polish army. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the historical setting. Now, the cool thing about this fight is that there's actually similar numbers to the historical battle. Now, if we go ahead and look at the army comps and get, and get ready for this battle. By the way, let me just show you real quick how this is going to play out. We have the two Polish horses located here. We've got the first uh, one-third of the Teutonic force. They're kind of marching, leaving the town, getting ready to get attacked, I guess you could say. And then we have the extra wave of forces who will arrive a little bit later. So, pretty cool scenario. I really, really like this one. Now, if we look at the historical numbers, there's about 5,000 Polish. There's actually only about 3,900 in this scenario. So, they had about 1,060 less men, historically speaking. And the Teutonic Order, they actually have 1,300 more men than they had. They did this for balancing reasons, but overall, the numbers are very, very similar to the overall numbers from the historical fight, which I think is pretty cool. But let's look at the army comps. The first Polish army, he's got the Great Banner of Krakow, a great, a really great heavy shock calf. He's bringing lots of uh, heavy infantry, all high periods, so even the units are correct, you know, type of units, which is really cool. He's got sergeants in the back line, that's the heart of his infantry. He's bringing a lot of heavy crossbowmen, so about four or five units of them. That's going to be absolutely vital in this situation. And then he's got the Polish king who was present on the battlefield and then we also have some halberdiers on the flank and some extra cab He's got some Polish knights on the battlefield. So that's the first Polish army The second Polish army is actually very similar uh, bringing crossbows to the battlefield He also has Pavi's uh, spears and he has sergeants ready to go kind of just waiting for the ambush waiting the perfect time to strike He's got I guess this would be the Polish actually 
I'm not sure where the king was and the, where the prince was, but we also have another Polish king, but one of those would actually be the prince. And then here's some Polish knights for Cav, and that's really about it for the Polish armies. We'll now move on to the Teutonic armies, which again are all very similar. So the first Teutonic army, he's got some Ritterbruder, he has uh, Spear Sergeants, and he also has some Sword Brothers in the back, so that's really the heart of his army, and that's pretty much it. He also back here has got some Teutonic Sergeants, and he has some Crossbows, so again, Crossbows are going to be a huge, huge help in this fight, they're going to be absolutely vital. Also the Cav, keeping your Cav alive. Will be very important uh, the battle technically is underway so we're gonna go a little bit faster here's the next Teutonic army again very similar army comps of sword brothers uh, spear sergeants and uh, crossbows and cav again mixed in with the Teutonic sergeants and then over here uh, once again very similar force of cav lots of cav guys I love it great old you know Teutonic forces and then some spear sergeants and sword brothers and Teutonic Sergeants and Heavy Crossbows. There you have it, guys. There you have it. Uh, let's go ahead and do normal speed and get this battle underway. All right, so the Teutonic Forces, they realize that, uh-oh, here comes Poland. We got to form up, get ready for this attack. I think we had the uh, Great Banner of Krakow kind of scouting up ahead. And now Poland is pushing forward their crossbows. Again, Poland... They need to get aggressive here and really take out this force before reinforcements arrive. So it's important for them to be, like I said, aggressive. But you don't want to get too aggressive because you've got to kill two other forces after this one. So you got to be smart about it. Now, I think what they should do is wait just a little bit and wait for the reinforcements from the tree line to arrive who have not march forward just yet they're still hanging back waiting for the perfect moment but i think now is a good time to get going because by the time you actually get behind this force uh the main force will be attacking head on so there he is gloriously gloriously marching forward the polish army just licking their lips knowing they're gonna kill a lot of their most hated enemy the teutonic order and we also have some cab mobilizing the king marching with his men the crossbows are about to get in range. The Teutonic Order order is forming a bit of a, a, pro a protective formation, which makes sense because obviously the player realizes that there's going to be forces behind him. I don't know if there's any rules that like he can't form up until he realizes that they are behind him. I don't know how that works exactly, but he's got his crossbows behind his spear sergeants, and we are getting a little bit of a skirmish going on. So a great fight so far. The Teutonic Order, he has some Cav on his wing, his right wing. And he's probably just waiting. He's going to use them defensively against the Polish Cav. Again, as the Teutonic Order, you just want to stay alive. You don't not, you, not necessarily like go for critical strikes, which oh, it looked like he was thinking about it. But he wants to more just be annoying and stay alive. But here we go. Here comes Poland from the, the, the flank, the left side. So he's got some Polish Knights. Who are getting dangerously close to the Teutonic Order. The Teutonic Order was thinking about charging in, but he's not going to pursue. Now they're headed over to the other side. They're getting hit, hit from the flank from uh, some crossbows. And let's see, is Poland going to go for it now? Oh, this is such a bad situation for the Teutonic Order. Oh, wait, he's going to turn and charge. Yes, he's got the Polish Knights so right where he wants. So I'm pretty sure the Ritter Bruder are a little bit better than the Polish Knights. So this could actually be a pretty good fight. But again, remember, they are weakened by, or they were weakened by those crossbows. And then over here, we got the Great Banner of Krakow. It looks like they're going for a charge against the shields. But no, they're not going to go for it. Uh, I, actually, I think they were going for crossbows, but the shields got in the way. Now the Great Banner, or the spears, I, spears, I should say. No, wait, wait, wait. Let's slow it down. Okay, we've got a lot going on. So we're actually, they're transferring the troops. So the knights are now going through this tiny little gap. This is the original Polish knights who were attacking uh, the, the Ritterbruder. Now the Great Banner of Krakow is over here fighting the Ritterbruder. And this is a little bit more of an even fight for the two cab units. All right, here comes Poland charging from the flank. We also have the, the main attacking force pushing forward. We've got a small cav engagement on this side as well. We have the uh, Polish Knights taking on the Ritter Bruta. Ritter Bruta. <laughs> I know you guys hate it when I pronounce uh, Deutsch or German words because um, <laughs> I do it so bad. Uh, but now the halberdiers are coming to support this cav engagement. But we also have some spear sergeants and some swordsmen coming. Swordsmen coming in, and we've got more sergeants going after crossbows. The crossbows are out in the open. Over on this side, we actually have a charge from the Teutonic Order closing in 
Look at this charge. That is beautiful. Fantastic. I love the aggressiveness of the Teutonic Order, but hopefully it will pay off for them. Uh, they are heavily outnumbered in this situation. And now more halberdiers from Poland closing in. They're gonna, it looks like they're gonna support their cab. Yes, yes siree, Bob. Sending in some halberdiers to defeat the Ritterbruder who are still putting up a great fight over on this side. Now finally, we've got the frontal Polish forces committing in sergeants. They are dropping somewhat. Oh, that, that cab unit. Uh, they're dropping somewhat to the uh, the crossbows over here. We've got a fight in the main line So there's just holes and gaps everywhere in this Teutonic army not a good sight if you're rooting for the Teutonic order Oh, here's another charge of infantry. I love it so much sword brother against the Pavi spearmen Beautiful fight so far so chaotic so lovely. I love it. There we go There we go the great banner of Krakow thanks to the support of the halberdiers were able to defeat the Ritter Bruder. Now this this cab unit, a very powerful cab unit, is going to be free to roam around, get some hammer and anvil, like right here. Look at this, look at this, boys. Here we go. And girls, if you know, whatever. It, okay, yeah, so great charge, great charge, and that should instantly shatter. Sure enough, yep, they're wavering, they're done. Like, oh god, are those the lances of the great banner of Krakow? I'm out of here. I'm done. And now the cab is free to storm into the center of the Teutonic lines, running down the crossbows and going after the very back lines who are fighting off the uh, Polish detachment force. We're doing just well. Look at that. See you later. Heads are rolling. And just, oh man. I love that animation where he just, you know, hits his shield into the dying body of that soldier. Pretty great stuff, pretty great stuff. Over on this flank, the uh, the cab is also starting to waver against the Polish forces. The Polish king is in this fight, so the general already active in this battle, uh, which is dangerous because, again, you're outnumbered. And, yes, you're attacking in waves, which is good. That's in your advantage. But you don't want to lose your general early on for obvious reasons because of morale uh, issues and whatnot. Now, here comes the next forces. They heard the chaos of battle and they were attracted to it. So now, not really. They probably just want to save their own, you know, their their own uh, fellow knights. But yeah, here they come pushing forward. Spear sergeants leading the way and the rest of the forces close behind. So Poland now has to quickly defeat what the troops are left of this army and prepare for the next wave. The general running down these troops. Let's see, there's a couple, there's a couple units here and there. But really, it's, I would say most of this Teutonic force is gone. It's only a matter of time until they completely uh, they completely break. Now, the Teuton Teutonic sergeants not giving up just yet. There's still 101 men, which makes sense. That's why they're not breaking, because they still have so many troops in that unit. The cab over here on this side, the Great Banner of Krakow. Uh, I don't think the Teutonic Order realizes that he has some spear sergeants high period nearby. So, yep. There they go. There they go. Now they're going to face the Great Banner of Krakow. Oh, here we go. Yeah, so they're just running around, chasing down these troops, making sure they don't return to the battle. And uh, they're very tired, though. This uh, this shock cab, they should probably rest up a little bit. And uh, he's got to save. Again, that's one thing that's in the disadvantage of Poland is that the fatigue is going to be really important because, you know, they're going to be fighting multiple waves and waves. So they got to try to conserve some of their fatigue, keep some troops in back reserves and wait for future waves. Man, look at this. The Teutonic Sergeants, look at them go. Not quitting. There is not a, a, a single a quit. I don't, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I, I don't know what I was going to say there, but they don't quit. How about that? That that works a little bit better. They do not quit. Oh, God. That's going to make them quit, though. <laughs> the hammer and anvil. Yeah, they're breaking now. So there you have it. The first Teutonic wave is destroyed, and here comes the second wave right on time. I think, I think he's using some depleted spear sergeants as meat shield. Oh, yeah. Trying to absorb some of that uh, bolt fire, that crossbow bolt fire. Uh, finally, the... Uh, the great spears are pushing forward. They're fresh. They're eager. They got to try to use that against the Polish army. Let's see the uh, the fatigue levels of the Polish force. Let's see. Winded. And uh, the crossbows are fresh, which is no surprise. But the infantry is actually winded. Now they're active. 
So now Poland has a couple seconds here where he can rest up his men. He's like, all right, man, catch your breath. We got a whole nother Teutonic force. Don't, hey, don't get worried. Like, we're here to kill these guys because that's what we do. It's our passion, right? So this is this was made for us. Now they're fresh. Look at that. They're already fresh because of my speech right there. That's that's probably why. Uh, but here comes a kind of a little bit of a flanking force. Look at this. Brave mounted sergeants. Oh, wait. No. Ah, it was it was close. Almost almost surprised the crossbows. But I like this. I like, I like this little uh, sword brother flank. It's pretty cool. It's unfortunate. I was really hoping he'd get some of those crossbows because that would have been epic. But now he's going to fully commit. So let's get a bird's of view. In fact, let's get a tactical view. Look at this. The two Polish armies have united as uh, one major force. And they should probably, uh, this army needs to get going pretty quick soon as well. Because this is going to be a tough battle for this Teutonic army alone. So here we go, guys. No, keep going. See, the best way to counter crossbows is just getting so close to their forces that, you know, if they fire their crossbows, they risk friendly fire. Oh, look at that. They're dropping. Go, just charge in. Don't, just his foreman shield wall. He's trying to put up the, the you know, his defenses. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that beautiful force as they push forward. That is gorgeous. Against the two. Oh, here we go. Poland holds brave men of Poland. All right, there we go. More and more forces. He's kind of using his sword brothers as a protective shield for his Teutonic sergeants. More troops going to the front line. Poland holding their ground. We've got some... Polish knights in the back lines attacking, but I don't really think they're going to do too much because of how depleted they are. And we've got more uh, spears just kind of hanging back. Crossbows really focusing their fire. It's going to be up to these crossbows to rack up a lot of kills. Also, they need to be trying to focus down the uh, Polish crossbows because, again, crossbows are going to be key to this battle. And whoever has the most uh, towards the late game, I think, is going to win the fight. Also, Cav is going to be really important. Oh, wait. What's going on back here? Oh, look at this. We got one of the Teutonic... No, no. That's the Polish general fighting the... Oh, okay. No. I thought they were breaking the Polish general. But no, it's the sergeants that are breaking. And now... Oh, jeez. They are already... The sword brothers. Yeah, the Teutonic order is definitely a lightweight in this game. Uh, I, th I think you just got to bring a lot of like, great heavy cav when playing as a Teut Teutonic Order because their infantry is just not that great. Not that good. You can see they're already wavering against a unit that's already seen action, you know? Wait, wait. We've got Chaos over on this side as well. So a lot of the Spears have joined the fight, fighting the Halberdiers, the Polish Halberdiers. The crossbows are kind of using the tree line. I like that. Kind of using that as protection. Here comes the next and final uh, third of the force. Who are going to be arriving just on time. Supporting their Teutonic ally. Who's committed most of his army into the fight already. And look at the balance of power. Still greatly in favor of the Teutonic order. But overall, I mean, that's a pretty balanced battle. Like, I think the players did an excellent job of balancing this scenario. Which is really hard to balance because of waves you know it's tough to determine what's fair and what's not so it did take them a couple of goes to play this battle and i just want to i wanted to make that clear because i really appreciate that the fact that the people who set up this battle they care so much to create awesome content that it took them multiple times to get this battle just right to make it fair and balanced which is really cool and it creates great you know like edge of edge, edge of the sea edge i don't even i can't even talk right now you'll be on the edge of your seat excitement is what i was trying to say dang it god words are so damn hard uh but here there's the general of the teutonic order trying to finish off the great banner of krakow and they eventually they do so rest in peace the great banner of krakow now the the general is going to be flanking around. Now go. Oh, we got a general v. general battle. The Polish king. Wow, that is a gutsy move from Poland. So let's go ahead and do slow motion here uh, so we can get a better view of the fight. Look at that. The bird's eye view is so awesome. So chaotic. So you can see that this Teutonic army is on its last leg. I mean, they've got crossbows. They have some infantry still in the fight, but most of them are wavering or already breaking. The general is in the battle, but they are about to be overwhelmed 
by spears but at this point since his army is pretty much gone it's not a huge loss if he loses the general it's not a big deal uh back over here this army is pretty much untouched this is going to be the largest concern for the polish forces and the balance of power is still in favor if you look at the man count there's still a thousand difference between the two armies so again uh much better than before that's for sure but poland is still outnumbered by a ton and it's uh, starting to become late game uh, where units are starting to get tired they're getting depleted and uh, taking on a whole another fresh force is going to be very challenging so let's just go back and enjoy some close-ups of this final uh, last leg of this Teutonic army oh here comes the crossbow fire hey, look at there's the king the king of Poland fights with his men You gotta watch out for friendly fire though, that like crossbow fire can uh, do a lot of damage not only to the enemy but to your own men. He's surrounded by Teutonic soldiers but here come some spears. Rally to the king! Rally to the king! That's awesome. So there they go, they're breaking the general. Yep, he broke. And the, yes, the king's like... Onward! Chase them down! Pretty cool stuff. Back here, oh yeah, there's the, they're just crumbling, crumbling to what's left of Poland. Now Poland's gonna be able to focus all of their forces on this main fight. The final section of this force have committed to the battle. The sergeants high period are in the fight. Or, I'm sorry, the spear sergeants high period of the Teutonic Order are in the fight. Facing the sergeants of Poland. And we got a lot of cav flanking around, so let's get a bird's eye view. Look at this. Crossbows in the secondary line, focusing their fire on these crossbows. And look at this, an easy charge. Easy charge for the Teutonic Order. Crushing Poland's back lines. Poland's going to go ahead and throw in uh, the prince, I assume. So yeah, we've got the other Polish general. He's in the fight, trying to protect his back lines. And this makes sense. I understand now why he needs to use his general or... or not that I understand, of course I understand, but it makes sense that he's now using the general than compared to before where it wasn't necessarily needed. Now it's needed because he's got to protect the back lines of his men or he will get, you know, destroyed. Oh god, yep, yep. Now that uh, that one cav unit, cav unit is pinned, he's got another Ritter Bruder who's about to go in. He's got to take out this crossbows. Again, crossbows are so, so vital at this point in the battle. There we go. Here comes another charge. Just storming down. He's also going to be able to get behind the Polish forces. So, he might want to break off after killing these crossbows and go for the Polish infantry. Because if you can get behind them and do a good old, you know, hammer and anvil. There we go. Yes. Yes. Teutonic Order. So, this battle is shifting in favor of the Teutonic Order, but it's still, oh well, yeah, it's still, I mean, it's not shifting in their favor, it's been in their favor, uh, but they're starting to gain more control, you know? Uh, it's It's been a tough struggle for Poland at this point of the battle because of all the waves they have been fighting. And now the general is stuck in prolonged engagement, fighting multiple units uh, of, of uh, Teutonic Cav. Uh, there is a lot of crossbow support though, in the back it's risky to fire at, at your own general but it's a risk he's willing he's willing to take also we've got the other polish general close by but he's gonna he's not engaging he's actually disengaging okay so let's slow mo it let's look at uh what exactly is happening on multiple fronts so we've got this really important flanking battle this is going to be really important for poland now if the Teutonic, or both armies really, if the Teutonic arm, army can, can hold here, then I think they can win the overall battle. Now if this flank crumbles, the Polish forces will be able to push around and get behind this main line, which is already very flaky as we speak. Uh, but there's still a lot of uh, Teutonic reserves pushing on to the center and to the right flank from the Teutonic point of view. Uh, let's go back to normal speed, where this battle uh, this is really concerning. Look at all the troops in the back lines. He even has some swordsmen just standing here. The micro must be so intense. He doesn't realize it. He, there we go. There we go. Now they're moving in. Charge, sword brothers. Going after the halberdiers. Oh, come on, Poland. You fought so well so far. Don't you quit on me. So, 
I love both of these factions in the history of both of these uh, kingdoms, I guess you could say. Um, so I, 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 I can't pick who I want to win. I usually start to root for the, the side that looks like they're losing. You know, a bit of an underdog story, you know? I, I just like the underdog. But Poland is victorious on this flank. So now the crossbows of the Teutonic Order, they're out in the open. But do they have any cav? Oh, wait. Look at this. Look at this. We've got the Teutonic Order's general in deep behind enemy lines. Why is he sending in his general in a situation like this? I am not sure. But they're fighting the Polish general. Might actually be able to kill him. There is some swordsman support. Sergeant's high period supporting their king against the Teutonic Order. Oh, and the they break. Oh, God. Teutonic Order, why? He was so aggressive. Again, let me do a slow-mo. He was so aggressive with his general. He charged them around the Polish forces while they were still alive, while they were winning their fights. He charged them around. I think he wanted to go after some crossbows, and then that is where the Polish general... I was able to catch up to him and eventually defeat him. So now the Teutonic Order no longer has generals, but they still have a lot of troops. If you look at the end, oh, they've got, uh, there's a little less than, you know, a thousand men advantage. And the Polish forces now can regroup. It's all down to the yellow Polish force, the blue Polish force. They've got one unit left here that's in the center. So this is going to come down to the wire, guys. To the wire. There's five minutes left in the battle replay. So soon we will figure out who will win this historical fight. Oh, here comes another charge from the Teutonic Order. Let's see. Will they get there? Yes, they will. And they will crush, but then be crushed by the crossbows. That was a good charge. Oh, and here comes the general trying to save his own men. So it's coming down to such few troops. And it, like I said, crossbows and cav is going to be the most important element to these armies. Uh, you know, there's only so much infantry can do unsupported. And there's a lot of cross... Look at... Oh my god. Look at these crossbows. Tons of crossbows. And there we go. The blue army, the blue Pol Polish army, the ally, uh, he has been crushed. Oh, jeez. Crossbow fire. Come on, hold, sergeants. Hold. It's going to be really important that the Polish crossbows, they are outnumbered, but they've got to try to get killing. They've got to kill a lot of, Teuto a lot of Teutonic so uh, soldiers. God, words are hard. Nice, uh, nice uh, shield wall formation. Testudo formation. Fresh sword brothers running around looking for any opportunity. The crossbows are spread out. This is actually really wise from Poland, spreading out their forces and getting multiple angles on the Teutonic infantry. Look at that, just waving. We got wavering from, from both sides. This is insane. Oh no, the general has fallen. Both generals of the, two, of the uh, Polish forces have died. So everyone is generalless. It's all gonna come down to the men. Oh, stand your ground and fire. Fire, fire those crossbows. Oh no, he's running, he's running. I guess he's gonna use the crossbows over on the flank to try to support him. Come on, fire, please. Please. All right, spears are still holding. This is gonna be a very important part of the fight. He still has some a swordsman over here running down some Prussian archers. Get him. But, I mean, they have so much ammo left. And now we've got some Teutonic sergeants closing in on the, uh, the sergeants of Poland. Trying to contain them, trying to break them, protecting their crossbows. Uh, this is what it's down to, guys. This is what it's down to. One spear unit, which is very healthy. They still have a lot of men in, in that unit. A couple crossbows against... Really? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five units of crossbows. One spear unit and then one Teutonic sergeant. Oh, wait. We've got another crossbow unit. So you hold your ground and fire. Hold your ground and fire. Oh, what are they firing at? Oh, they're going after the crossbows of the Teutonic order. Well, now they got to fight. Take the swords out. No, they're running. They're going to run for it. Okay, that's not a bad idea. He's going to keep his crossbows alive. He should stop running. He needs to fire at the backs of the Teutonic Sergeants as they uh, get to the front lines. Oh, these crossbows over on this side, they need to protect the flanks 
of the uh, the crossbows or the spearmen who are holding this line. Let's see. Let's see. Oh. He's fleeing. He's running back. No, he's actually going to charge because he realizes that he's not going to win in a prolonged skirmish against all these crossbows. So he's charging in. As long as these spears stay alive, there is hope. Oh, look at this. They're breaking. Oh, they're getting focused down. Yes, they break the Teutonic Sergeants. And there's still hope at last. There is hope. All they have to do is crush these crossbows. And there's so many. If they had just one depleted cav unit, they would win this battle. Oh, the crossbows are breaking, guys. They're breaking. But do they have enough ammo? Do they have enough manpower to kill these crossbows? It doesn't, I mean, it's very unlikely that Poland can pull a victory out of this situation, but you never know. You never absolutely know. As Aragorn says all the time, there's always hope. <laughs> the cringe. So this is, uh, this is bad. This might be the nail in the coffin right here. The heavy crossbowmen flanking behind the Pavi spearmen who are still holding, desperately holding. Oh, we need... Let's see. Actually, we've got a flank here of the heavy crossbow going around the Teutonic Spears. Oh, they're wavering, guys. The spears are wavering. Oh, no. But the spears are getting... Oh, no. The crossbows. Oh, now they're both wavering. Both armies are wavering. He's going to now turn, but break. He tried to charge the crossbows, and that's going to be it, guys. The rest of the Polish crossbows are going to win. And today, history has changed. The Teutonic Order, it was victorious, and Poland was defeated, but it was a valiant defeat. And for, you know, viewership, this was awesome. What a great ending, uh, but history did not repeat itself. And again, the Teutonic Order was victorious. Uh, but you got to give credit to Poland. I mean, look at these kills. They, they took on wave after wave. They did such a great job. Really enjoyed the fight. Their crossbows did great. The infantry did great. The great the great banner of Krakow did great. I mean, it is the great banner. They got 574 kills, which is the most, I believe. Yeah, it's it's the most. Surprisingly, there was an infantry unit getting really close to 500. Uh, did I say 5,000? I, I said 500. Anyways, uh, here's his ally also doing very well uh, with kills. And then here's the kills for the Teutonic Order. Uh, there's actually only two players, but one player was controlling a much larger force. So it's kind of like it was kind of like there was two players. So I want to give a big shout out to Gearhawk who sent it in, and also to all the other players who took part in this battle uh, because they went beyond the Call of Duty. They worked really hard to get this awesome scenario, and I think it turned out great. I really enjoyed this one, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. So that's it from me today uh, in Poland. And Pl Plaus Poland, I, I again hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.